Hi and welcome viewers of Nursing Academy 101. In this video, we will talk about latest pharmacology related multiple choice questions for nurses along with the answers and rationale. Part 1 But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share the channel to encourage us to continue and provide you with all in you. Question number one. A patient is receiving a beta blocker for hypertension, which assessment finding indicates a potential adverse effect of the medication. A. Increased heart rate. B. Dry cough. C. Hypoglycemia. D. Constipation. The answer is A. Increased heart rate. Beta blockers are known to decrease heart rate. An increased heart rate in a patient receiving a beta blocker may indicate a potential adverse effect. Question number two. The nurse is administering a medication that binds to specific receptor sites, producing a response that is less than the maximum response possible. This medication is an example of A. A. Agonist B. Antagonist C. Partial agonist D. Synergist the answer is C. Partial agonist. Partial agonist bind to specific receptor sites and produce a response that is less than the maximum response possible. They have both agonist and antagonist properties. Question number three. A patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD is prescribed epratropium bromide atrovent. This medication belongs to which drug class? A. Beta agonist B. Anticholinergic C. Corticosteroid D. Decotrein modifier The answer is B. Anticholinergic Epratropium bromide is an anticholinergic medication used to relax and dilate the airway in patients with COPD. Question number 4 the nurse is caring for a patient who is prescribed warfarin comedine therapy. Which laboratory test should the nurse monitor to evaluate the effectiveness of the medication? A. International normalized ratio INR B. Activated partial thromboplastin time PTT C. Prothrombin time PT D. Platelet count The answer is A. International normalized ratio INR Warfarin is an anticoagulant medication. The INR is the most appropriate laboratory test to monitor the effectiveness of warfarin therapy. Question number 5. Which medication is classified as a proton pump inhibitor? A. Cimetidine, Tegamet. B. Ranitidine, Zantac. C. Omeprazole, Prilosec. D. Famotidine, Pepsin. The answer is C. Omeprazole Prelucic. Omeprazole belongs to the proton pump inhibitor class of medications, which inhibit gastric acid secretion by blocking the enzyme responsible for acid production. Question number 6. The nurse is administering furosemide Lasix to a patient with heart failure. Which electrolyte imbalance should the nurse monitor for in this patient? A. Hyperkalemia B. Hypokalemia C. Hyponatremia D. Hypernatremia The answer is B. Hypokalemia Furosemide is a loop diuretic that promotes the excretion of potassium. Hypokalemia or low potassium levels is a potential adverse effect of this medication. Question number 7. A patient is prescribed aloprazolam, xanax, a benzodiazepine for anxiety. The nurse should monitor the patient for which common side effects of this medication. A. Drown mouse. B. Drowsiness. C. Urinary retention. D. Tachycardia. The answer is B. Drowsiness. Drowsiness is a common side effect of benzodiazepines such as alprazolam. Patients should be advised to avoid activities that require alertness until they know how the medication affects them. Question number 8. The nurse is providing discharge instructions to a patient prescribed an oral contraceptive. Which information should the nurse include regarding the medication? 
A. Take the medication with food to enhance absorption. B. The medication doesn't provide protection against sexuality transmitted infection. C. Start taking the medication on the first day of the menstrual cycle. D. Oral contraceptives increase the risk of blood clots. The answer is D. Oral contraceptives increase the risk of blood clots. Oral contraceptives increase the risk of blood clots, especially in women who smoke or over 35 years old or have a history of blood clotting disorder. This information should be included in the discharge instructions. Question number 9. The nurse is caring for a patient who is prescribed digoxin lanoxin for heart failure, which assessment finding indicates a potential digoxin toxicity. A. Bradycardia B. Hypertension C. Increase urine output D. Yellow tinged vision The answer is D. Yellow tinged vision Yellow tinged vision or change in color vision is a classic symptom of digoxin toxicity. Other signs include bradycardia, nausea, vomiting, and confusion. Question number 10 A patient is prescribed metformin glucophage for type 2 diabetes mellitus. The nurse should monitor the patient's renal function due to the increased risk of A. Hypoglycemia B. Lactic acidosis C. Hyperkalemia D. Diabetic ketoacidosis The answer is B. Lactic acidosis Metformin is associated with an increased risk of lactic acidosis. A serious metabolic complication Renal function should be monitored regularly to assess the drug safety and prevent lactic acidosis. Question number 11. A patient is prescribed a medication that inhibits the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. Which condition is this medication commonly used to treat? A. Hypertension B. Alzheimer's disease C. Diabetes mellitus D. Asthma The answer is B. Alzheimer's disease. Medication that inhibits acetylcholinesterase, such as donibezil, aricep, are commonly used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease to increase acetylcholine levels and improve cognitive function. Question number 12. A patient is prescribed a statin medication for high cholesterol. The nurse should instruct the patient to report which potential adverse effect related to statin therapy. A. Dry cough B. Muscle pain or weakness C. Blurred vision D. Weight gain The answer is B. Muscle pain or weakness Statin medications such as atorvastatin lipitor can cause muscle pain or weakness. Patients should be advised to report these symptoms promptly as they may indicate a serious side effect called rhabdomyolysis. Question number 13 a patient with a history of seizures is prescribed phenytoin, Dilantin, for seizure control. The nurse should inform the patient that regular monitoring of which laboratory value is necessary during phenytoin therapy. A. Blood glucose level B. White blood cell counts C. Liver function test D. Serum phenytoin level The answer is D. Serum phenytoin level Phenytoin is a medication used for seizure control. Regular monitoring of serum phenytoin levels is essential to ensure therapeutic drug levels are maintained and to prevent toxicity. Question number 14. The nurse is caring for a patient who is receiving heparin therapy. Which laboratory test should the nurse monitor to evaluate the effectiveness of heparin therapy? A. Activate partial thromboplastin time, APTT. B. Prothrombin time, PT. C. Platelet count. D. International normalized ratio, INR. The answer is A. Activated partial thromboplastin time, A. PTT. Heparin is an anticoagulant medication. The APTT is the most appropriate laboratory test to monitor the effectiveness of heparin syrup. Question number 15. A patient is prescribed levothyroxine tenthroid for hypothyroidism. The nurse should teach the patient to take the medication. A. With meals to enhance absorption. 
B. At bed time to promote sleep. C. On an empty stomach in the morning. D. With antacid to prevent gastric irritation. The answer is C. On an empty stomach in the morning. Levothyroxine is best absorbed on an empty stomach, preferably in the morning, to promote consistent absorption and avoid potential interactions with food or other medications. Question number 16. A patient is prescribed warfarin comedine therapy. Which vitamin should the nurse instruct the patient to consume consistently to maintain a stable response to the medication? A. Vitamin A. B. Vitamin B12, C, Vitamin C, D, Vitamin K. The answer is D, Vitamin K. Warfarin is an anticoagulant that works by inhibiting vitamin K-dependent clotting factors. Consistent vitamin K intake is important to maintain a stable response to warfarin therapy. Question number 17. The nurse is caring for a patient who is prescribed a loop diuretic. Which electrolyte imbalance should the nurse monitor for in this patient? A. Hypernatremia B. Hyperkalemia C. Hypocalcemia D. Hypomagnesemia The answer is D. Hypomagnesemia Loop diuretics such as furosemide can cause excessive urinary excretion of magnesium leading to hypomagnesemia. Question number 18 a patient is receiving intravenous morphine sulfate for pain management. The nurse should monitor the patient for which adverse effect of morphine administration. A. Hypertension B. Urinary tension C. Bradycardia D. Hypoglycemia The answer is B. Urinary tension Morphine and opioid analgesic can cause urinary tension due to its effects on smooth muscle tone. The nurse should monitor the patient's urinary output closely. Question number 19. A patient is prescribed alloprenol for the management of gout. The nurse should instruct the patient to increase intake of which substance while taking this medication. A. Calcium B. Purine-rich foods C. Fluids D. Iron The answer is C. Fluids. Alloprenol is used to reduce uric acid levels and prevent gout attacks. Increasing fluid intakes help promote uric acid excretion and reduce the risk of kidney stone formation. Question number 20. A patient is prescribed a medication that acts as a non-selective beta blocker. Which condition would be a contraindication to the use of this medication? A. Hypertension B. Asthma C. Diabetes mellitus D. Migraine headache. The answer is B. Asthma. Non selective beta blockers can cause bronchoconstriction and worsen respiratory symptoms in patients with asthma. They are generally contraindicated in patients with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So PD. Question number 21. A patient is prescribed aspirin therapy for prevention of cardiovascular events. The nurse should inform the patient to avoid concurrent use of which over-the-counter medication due to an increased risk of bleeding? A. Acetaminophen, Tylenol B. Ibuprofen Advil C. Diphenhydramine, Benadryl D. Quaifenicin, Robitocin The answer is B. Ibuprofen Advil Ibuprofen is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug that inhibits plated aggregation. Similar to aspirin, Concurrent use of aspirin and ibuprofen increases the risk of bleeding. Question number 22. A patient is prescribed an angiotensin converting enzyme ACE inhibitor for hypertension. The nurse should monitor the patient for which common side effect of this medication. A. Hyperkalemia B. Dry cough C. Hypoglycemia D. Radicardia The answer is B. Dry cough. Dry cough is a common side effect of ACE inhibitors, such as lisinopril. It is related to increased level of bradykinin, a substance affected by ACE inhibitor. Question number 23. A patient is prescribed a medication that acts as a histamine 2 receptor antagonist. This medication is commonly used to treat A. Hypothyroidism 
B. Peptic ulcer C. Allergic rhinitis D. Type 2 diabetes mellitus The answer is B. Peptic ulcer H2 receptor and antagonist such as ranitidine, Zantac are commonly used to reduce gastric acid secretion and treat peptic ulcer by blocking histamine 2 receptors in the stomach. Question number 24. The nurse is providing education to a patient prescribed an inhaled corticosteroid for asthma management. The patient should be instructed to A. Rinse the mouth with water after each use B. Discontinue use when symptoms improve C. Use the inhaler only during an acute asthma attack D. Increase the dose during period of stress The answer is A. Rinse the mouth with water after each use. Rinsing the mouth with water after each use of an inhaled corticosteroid helps prevent the development of oral threat, a common side effect associated with these medications. Question number 25. A patient is prescribed metoprolol, loprisol, a selective beta blocker. This medication primarily acts on which receptor type? A. Beta-1 adrenergic receptors. B. Beta-2 adrenergic receptors C. Alpha-1 adrenergic receptors D. Muscarinine receptors The answer is A. Beta-1 adrenergic receptor Metoprolol is a selective beta-1 adrenergic receptor blocker. It primarily acts on beta-1 receptors in the heart, resulting in decreased heart rate and blood pressure. Question number 26 the nurse is caring for a patient who is prescribed atenolol tenormine, a beta blocker. Which vital signs should the nurse monitor closely in this patient? A. Blood pressure B. Respiratory rate C. Oxygen saturation D. Body temperature The answer is A. Blood pressure Beta blockers such as atenolol primarily affect blood pressure and heart rate. The nurse should closely monitor the patient's blood pressure to assess the medication's effectiveness. Question number 27. A patient is prescribed an opioid analgesic for post-operative pain management. Which potential side effect should the nurse educate the patient about? A. Hypotension B. Constipation C. Insomnia D. Tachycardia The answer is B. Constipation Opioid analgesics are known to cause constipation due to their effects on the gastrointestinal tract. Patients should be educated about the importance of adequate hydration, fiber intake, and the potential need for stool softeners or laxatives. Question number 28. A patient is prescribed a medication that acts as a proton pump inhibitor, PPI. This medication is commonly used to treat A. Hypothyroidism B. Peptic ulcers C. Allergic rhinitis D. Type 2 diabetes mellitus The answer is B. Peptic ulcers Proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, prelozic are commonly used to reduce gastric acid secretion and treat peptic ulcers by inhibiting the proton pump in gastric parietal cells. Question number 29 A patient is prescribed a medication that belongs to the class of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors SSRIs. This medication is commonly used to treat A. Hypertension B. Depression C. Hypothyroidism D. Parkinson's disease The answer is B. Depression Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors such as fluoxetine, Prozac are commonly used to treat depression by increasing serotonin levels in the brain. Question number 30. The nurse is caring for a patient who is prescribed an anticoagulant medication. Which laboratory test should the nurse monitor to evaluate the effectiveness of this medication? A. Activate partial thromboplastin time. B. Prothrombin time. C. Complete the blood count. D. Liver function test. The answer is B. Prothrombin time. PT. Prothrombin time PT. Is the laboratory test used to monitor the effectiveness of anticoagulant medications, such as warfarin. It measures the extrinsic pathway of the clotting cascade. 